let's appreciate them better. Amen, amen. Amen. You can have your seats in Jesus' name. Those are our kids, juniors for Christ. And it is back on. We are starting to meet again. And if you want to join us, if you have a son or a daughter that wants to join us, you can see Hillary or Beatrice for more information. Buona I would like to thank our bishop and our mom for giving me this opportunity to share before you. It is a privilege. It is an honor. Thank you. Uh, before we share the word, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you praise glory and honor we pray that even as we hear your word that your god will minister to us powerfully and your god will minister unto us uh, with the language you can understand your god according to our understanding that your father this service we shall not live the same way we came in but your god there shall be a difference that shall be seen dear god for your glory and honor we pray that your spirit will touch every life dear god that will hear your message dear father we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All of us say amen. 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 My name is Isaiah Dimba, and I'm born again. Today I'll be sharing. We have been in a men's week this, this whole week. It was a men's week, and it was powerful, awesome, from the prayers to the midweek service, and we were also shared by Dr. Kuria on Thursday, it was awesome and powerful. We got enlightened. And so, the theme that, uh, the theme of our men's week was men mounting up. And I would like to take that as my topic today, mounting up. And that is our theme of also this year. That is from the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40, from uh, the last verse. But I want us to start with Luke chapter 18. So we are going to talk about mounting up, uh, and uh, from my text, we are going to read from Luke chapter number 18, from the verse number one, it's on your screen. The Bible says, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Now this is Jesus talking to his disciples, one as if you, and he is telling them, men always ought to pray and not lose heart always ought to pray. We should pray without ceasing. Verse 2 says, saying, there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Uh -huh. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversaries. And, the, uh, and he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, mm -hmm. yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Then the Lord said, hear, the, hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? Now, in this text we see when Jesus was now talking to his disciples, and we see two people. Number one, we see a, 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 a widow. And this widow, she had a problem. Someone had, had done an injustice to her. Her adversaries. And now, she needs help to get justice. And now comes the second character, and that is the judge. Now the judge, Jesus describes him as a person who does not fear God, nor regard man. Now, these are two people. This woman needs justice, and she goes to a judge who does not fear God, nor regard man. Now, this tells me that this judge was a selfish kind of a person, one as he fear, because he doesn't regard man. Whatever you say to him, he doesn't care. And he doesn't fear God, so morality does not apply to him, one as he fear, because 
Jesus is, uh, God is our standard for good and evil. And we, we know we have done good. We know we have done bad according to the standards of God. Now, if I don't fear God, then anything is applicable to me. Now, this tells me that this judge, he cares only about his interests. One as he fear. And we have en- encountered such people in our daily lives where now you need a service. They don't fear God and they do not regard man. They are looking for themselves. And now, if when this woman came to this judge, uh, the judge expected some, to get something out of this woman. But according to how this woman is described, I don't think she had anything. But, and if she had any something, she, she was not willing to give. Buona Sifiwe. She wanted to go in the right direction. Now, Jesus specifically says, this judge does not regard man, nor does he fear God. So for you to get some kind of justice from this judge, you must be prepared to part with something so that the judge can have some interest in himself. Now, this woman, despite knowing all this, because now Jesus specifically says, and I believe that this judge is known for his character of maybe asking for something on the side so that he can actually serve you. And this woman, despite knowing all this, she goes to him, to him and asks for justice. And lo and behold, the judge says no. And the Bible says he ignores her. He ignores her. And I, I don't know if you have ever been ignored, but it is not a good feeling. Praise God. We all want to be recognized at some point. With our peers, with our family, with our friends, we want to be recognized, at least some kind of recognition. But this judge said, no, nah, come. and he ignored her. And he said, no. And this is a place where now some of us in Ezafika up and we become like, let me go and try it at another place. Praise God. Let me go and try it at another place. This kind of madarao I cannot stand. This is a disrespect to me because I believe this is an elderly woman. This is a someone that is mature. She does not deserve such a treatment. But this, this judge does not care because he regards no man. One as a few. And now, this woman does not quit. Praise God. This woman does not quit. She comes to the judge again. And again she is ignored. Praise God. And I, I was just trying to think. Because now, she is not even allowed in the office. Where was she standing? The whole day. This judge will come in the morning and find her there. He will leave in the evening and still that woman is there. Praise God. This woman knows very well, this judge is not an honest judge. This is a selfish man. But I will still come there. One as he feel. And that is an attitude that it amazed me. I looked at it and I saw that many of us will give up, maybe in the second try, in the third try, we'll look for a better judge because I believe there were other judges there. Praise God. If maybe they were, I don't know. But this woman persisted. Knowing the answer even tomorrow. But she still went. And the question is, how many of us have ever given up? The first try you tried. You pray to God. Now, because Apuchiri, you find the text saying that, now hear what the unjust judge said. I will answer this woman lest she wears me out. I don't regard man. I don't even acknowledge men. I do not fear God. I don't care what God thinks about this situation or that situation. But because this woman is coming day in and day out, I will get tired of this woman. Let me answer her prayers. One as a fear. And now uh, what we are talking about is mounting up. And the Bible says we will mount up with wings like eagles. One as a fear. It is an exciting part where we mount up with wings like eagles. We soar up high. We run and we are not weary. We walk and we are not faint. But there is the first part that says, them that trust in the Lord. And that is the key thing about that verse. Them that trust in the Lord. Those are the people that will mount up with wings like eagle. Now, the, in this world, Nothing good will ever come without a sacrifice. 
Bwana asifiwe. There must be a price that you are willing to pay for you to get that which you want. Praise God. Even salvation needed a sacrifice for us to enjoy this kingdom, for us to enjoy the good things that God has given to us. We needed a sacrifice. Bwana asifiwe. So, this tells me nothing good comes without a price to be paid. This woman paid the price. She was ignored day in and day out. But she was willing to pay the price. The question is, are you willing to pay the price so that you can mount up to that level that you want to go? Buona Sifia. Are you willing to mount up? Are you willing to pay the price? Because there's a price to be paid. Now, this widow persisted. And as I said, she fought. It was a fight. Not a physical one, but a mental one. She had to encourage herself every morning when she woke up. Every night when she go, went back home, she encouraged herself. Because it's so easy to give up for that doubt. Can he really actually answer my prayer? Can he really give me that justice? She fought. Why? Because she knew what she wanted. Number one, she wanted justice. That is true for herself. This woman wanted justice. And this is the drive. This is what drove her to actually come in every morning and to live with the judge every night. She wanted justice for herself. And she knew that this is the place that I must get my justice. There is no other place. Nihapa, here. Here. This judge is the one that will give me my justice. No one else. And now, the question is this. We have been, this whole year, we have been taught about mounting up, and we bless God. And I believe and I know that before this year ends, we will mount up to those levels that God has destined us to go. But the question is this. Do you know what you want? Or do you just want to mount up to somewhere? One as if you. They say that if you're going somewhere and you don't have a destination, then paluta chokea, that is your destination. One as if you. The place that you'll get tired, you sit. That is your destination. The question is this. Do you know where you want to mount up to? Praise God. Because mounting up is you are moving from a certain place to a certain place, point A to point B. Now you are in point A. Do you know your point B? Praise God. And now, do you know how to get to that point B? Praise God. Because you can be saying, I will mount up, I will mount up, but do you know how to get there? Because this woman knew what she had to do. She knew what she wanted and what she needs to do. She needed justice from this judge, so I will get it from there. There is no other place for me to go. It is this place. The same case we see with the woman with the issue of blood. She had been suffering for years. Buona Sifiwe. With this disease that is embarrassing and it is so stressful, no doctor has solutions, and she knew, ah, I have heard of someone. I will go there. I know what I want from him, and I know how to get it from him. Buona Sifiwe. Even though when there is a crowd, I will still reach him. Because there are so many people, but none of them receive their miracle, except the woman who knew what she wanted and knew how, she, how to get it. She didn't even ask for permission. She knew how to get it. And for you to get it, that's what I'm saying. You need to fight. Praise God. You need to fight. It is a fight. It is not a physical fight. It is a spiritual fight. A fight of faith. And we hear Paul saying this. I believe it's in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 6. Kindly give us 2 Timothy, chapter number 6, verse number 12. The Bible says that fight the good fight. Praise God. This thing, Paul says it twice. Fight the good fight. The first one, he says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Praise God. For you to gain that life that you want, you must fight the good fight of faith. Because there will be people that will actually disappoint you. There will be circumstances that will bring you down. But fight the good fight of faith. 
Praise God. Buana asifiwe. This woman did not get her answer at a go. It was not an, an instant answer. She fought every day. She came day in and day out. At long last, she got her answer. And the same thing for you. you. If you need that answer, you need to fight that good fight of faith. Praise God. Because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. There is no other way to get that result that you want. That job that you are desiring, there is no other way. It is a fight of faith. Praise God. And you will see people with big CVs. You will see people with stacks of certificates. With only one. But you need to fight the good fight of faith. Praise God. Because God has not called you because you are qualified, but you are qualified because you are called. Buona si fiu. And that is the thing. When the disciples were being, the three years that they spent with Jesus, they were a mess. They were doing crazy things. Jesus was always telling them, where is your faith? Oh, you of little faith. Because they were fighting a fight of faith. When they succeeded, we see them actually doing extraordinary miracles. Buona si fiu. And that is the result that actually they desire to see. And what I'm saying today is, you will mount up, yes, but are you willing to pay the price? Because faith will not come easy. The Bible says, be renewed. Praise God. If you want that transformation, be renewed. Your mind must be renewed. By what? By the word of God. And when you read the word of God, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You will get that healing that you desire. Healing is in this place. You will mount up to that healing. But you need to fight the good fight of faith. The doctors will say it is impossible. Your friends will say, nah, give up. But God has said your healing is already there. Praise God. By his stripes, you are healed. Not you will be healed today, not tomorrow. But you are healed. It is there to lay hold of it. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Praise God. Because in this eternal life, there is everything that you desire, everything that you need, everything that you want in this life. It is already there. Now, it is up to you to lay hold of it. No one will do that for you. Praise God. This woman had already seen her justice being done, but it was not still manifested. She had to do something about it. The question is, what are you doing about it now? Praise God. If you go without prayer, if you go without reading the word, without fellowship, you will never receive it. As much as you will shout, I will mount up with wings. You will never mount up. Praise God. And it's a fact and it's the truth. Because I am not the one that gives the strength to mount up. Praise God. You are not the one that will give yourself strength. You cannot psych yourself to reach that place. It is only God that lifts up people. And if you subtract him from that equation, you are doing nothing. Praise God. It is a fact. Whether you want to pray or not, pray. Whether you are feeling like reading the word or tired, read the word of God. Whether you are feeling tired of not talking to people, seek the face of God. I will assure you, you will get that which you want. Praise God. Give us Proverbs chapter 20 verse 29. The glory of young men is in their strength, and the splendor of old men is their gray hair. Buona si fie. The glory of the young men is their strength, meaning that the young people are strong. Buona si fie. It's a verse, and it's the truth. Young people, we are full of strength. Sinikweli. And we can do anything. When you are young, you believe you can do anything. You can go to the heights that you desire to go. You can achieve that which you want to achieve. But this does not apply. The Bible says that if you read the book of Isaiah chapter 40, before it comes to mounting up, it says even the young men get weary. Praise God. Meaning your strength will account for nothing. Nothing. Praise God. Your strength will account for nothing. The Bible says that you will run and you will not get weary. Meaning, you will reach a certain point. But you will get tired. Praise God. You will reach a certain point, but you will get tired. 
you need the strength of God. I will give you an example of two people. We see Peter and Judas. Judas runs the race for three good years with Jesus. He sticks by him. He even gets a responsibility of actually being a treasurer. One as a few. And he holds an esteemed position. We know that in an in organization, treasurers are very important. Praise God. I believe they don't even have a secretary or as an assistant because it's a very key job. Sinikweli. Now, this guy is up there with Jesus. But after he gets tired, where now he fulfills scripture and he goes and betrays Jesus, we see him depending on himself. And he can't. So, he does what any man can do when you are tired and you are weary. You give up. But we see Peter, on the other hand, also denying Jesus, doing something that was wrong. And he, at that point, we can say he got weary. He got tired. But we see him being restored. Praise God. And it is God that gives him the power. And he comes back and he becomes the chief apostle. Someone that speaks the word of God mightily and does miracles left, right, and center. Not because he could, because by his strength, he denied Jesus. One as a few. And also us. This salvation is not a matter of flesh and blood. Praise God. It is not a matter of all the material things you can achieve. You can get a million, you can get vehicles, you can get the best houses, but you will get tired. Praise God. It will get tired because that will not satisfy you. Praise God. Your run will reach some point and you will stand. But the Bible says that he is the one that will give you strength if you trust in the Lord. Praise God. And what I'm trying to say is, fight the good fight of faith. Brothers and sisters, fight the good fight of faith. This is a fight. A fight is something that is not done while sitting. One as if you. I remember when I was, uh, when I was in primary, when I was in uh, primary school, I shifted from a certain school and went to another school. And the first time uh, I went to that school, I was in class five at that point, and when I was in class six, boys, Kitambo, we had a tendency to fight. Uh, not because we had any reason, but because we just wanted to establish who is the strongest. I don't know if it happened to you, but it happened to me. So every time, every time uh, we wanted, it was being talked about daily, day in and day out. People were trying, Nani, who are you? You are new. We, don't, we want to gauge you because there were levels. So I had, before that, I had never fight, fought anyone in my life at, before that point. So I had nothing, I had no idea of how to fight. But because I am a man and you cannot actually drop down your CV, I said, okay, I can. <laughs> so I, I looked at a, a certain guy that, Nikona, this one, uh, I can at least try something. And Tuneza Pelekana Hapana Pale Kidogo. And so I said, okay. And uh, that we had a tendency after school, this happens after school. So we went and they had, all, they had a spot where there were no cameras and the teachers never saw you. So, I went there and I put my sleeves vizuri and I put my bag down and I said, okay. We had no reason. We actually, I never even knew. It was he, my friend. He was my friend. He, there was no reason actually at all for us to do such things. So, I, I got up and we have a cheering squad. <laughs> boys and their funny games and so i remember i remember vaguely vitukidogo kidogo happened apale because the thing that child that guy one punch and my lip ikafura and i was confused and i started i don't know how to scream or <laughs> i was i was confused so Jesus in Guinness, they started just landing and i remember i, I went home pio i left even my bag there a friend of mine took it it was an embarrassing situation. But what I was saying is, the fight, I was not prepared. One as if you were. I don't know if I, okay, for those who have fought, maybe you are beaten. It is not a pleasant experience. Praise God. 
It is painful and embarrassing. And that is what the devil does to us. Because the devil will not come and fight you physically. Praise God. He will come and get you at that point where now you think that you have reached. Because you think that you are so spiritual because you come to church on Sunday. Every Sunday you are at the front front and you are saying, Mimi, I am a man of God. But you know and you know that at home you never seek the face of God. When the devil comes, you will be embarrassed. Praise God. And it is a fact. Ask the sons of Sceva. They were never prepared. Praise God. It was not a pleasant experience. These were children of a, a pastor. Bona Sifir. And they went to that place with all their confidence. Let me tell you, no one sent them there. Praise God. No one sent them there. Akuna mdali kuja kambia, you seven, go and actually cast out this demon. No one, they, with all the spirituality that they thought they had, they went. And when they reached with all the boldness that they've had, they spoke. Praise God. But they never fought a good fight because they never fought. <laughs> Praise God. They, they never fought. They were beaten. There's a difference. Go on as you feel. Like the widow who we come every day, who, who came every day to this unjust judge. And she pleaded. And she pleaded every day without an answer. Sometimes we can pray and we feel like God is not even listening. Sometimes we can actually seek after the God and we can say that we cannot even see God. And I have not actually heard anything. It seems like you are doing nothing, but be sure you are doing something. Because the word of God says, if you pray according to his will, we are sure that he hears us. And if you are sure that he hears us, we know that he will answer us. Praise God. So you pray according to his will. Now the trick is, do you know his will? Praise God. Because his will is found in his word. And I'm here to challenge you. You who, if you are praying two hours, go now and pray three hours. If you are doing like a Bible study for five hours, well and good, we bless God for you. Push it more. Praise God. Because we are living for Christ. Nothing else. Praise God. If you are... If you have a sickness and you are praying for that healing, believe me you, it is there. Just, you, have, you just have to lay hold on that eternal life. Praise God. Because eternal life is perfect. There is no sickness. It is an emulation of the life that we will have in, in the kingdom of heaven. We are not going to start eternal life in heaven, but we have started it now. And that is why Paul is saying lay hold on that eternal, eternal life. Meaning that healing is hapo, wholeness is hapo. Everything that you need, it is there. The ability to succeed, it is there. That which you dream of, it is there. Praise God. The fight of faith. Because I, 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 when we pray for, for, for flu, Homer, it is so easy to believe that you can go It is true. Or a headache. Because you know, uh, a flu, it takes only two to three days. A week in a quiet year, isn't it? But two to three days you'll get, will get well, whether you pray or not. Unless it's something else. You just have to take some concussion and all these things and you are perfect. Now the question is this. What if you have that sickness that the doctor says, now this is impossible. Praise God. What if you were walking down the stairs, maybe it's not a sickness, you are walking down the stairs and you fell and you broke your leg weirdly that you cannot be actually repaired. The doctors will tell now, now you will walk funnily. You will walk with a limp. What will happen? You will just accept and say, okay, it is well. What if today you have no credentials, you have nothing, you are like you just rely on your experience and you get an interview. What will you do? You'll say, ah, he's young. What if maybe you don't have money 
and you are going to sleep hungry, you will just declare fast. Or you know, sometimes we we declare fast when we don't have food. One as if you. Okay, it is. I think for the single people do that. <laughs> One as if you. What will you do? You need to believe in the word of God. Where things don't seem like they are going right. Things are seeming like, ah, it is impossible. But you know who you believe in. Praise God. He is a God of impossibilities. When he says he will move a mountain, he literally means he will move a mountain if you say so. Praise God. It is not figuratively, it is a fact. When he says he will heal you of that sickness that it seems impossible, it is not something to encourage you, it is a fact. Praise God. And that is what we are saying. You will mount up to that level that you want to be. You just name that level. And you will see you moving from that level that you are in to that place. Buona asifiwe. He will give you the strength. He will give you the power. He will give you the ability that you need. All you have to do is believe in him. Praise God. That is all you need. You like a child believing in the ability of the parents to feed you. Praise God. And we know that God will never give us anything that we don't want, anything that will harm us. The Bible says that he, when you pray for bread, he will not give you stone. No, when you pray for a fish, he will give you a serpent. How much more when you ask for the Holy Spirit shall he pour upon you? Praise God. Because he is the one that will work in you. The Bible says that he will do exceedingly abundantly above all you can think or imagine praise god meaning it goes beyond your thinking capacity it goes beyond what you are imagining all you have to do is have faith in him and the verse finishes by saying that according to the power that works in you not in heaven but in you praise god the power is in you the power is in us we are not waiting for the power to come again it is already in your in you so that which you want you only need to look inside praise god because when you get born again the spirit of god comes and makes a dwelling in our hearts he makes a home he is not going anywhere praise god and he says i will be with you always to the end of time i will not leave you if Jesus walked with the disciples and they never lacked anything, I have read this Bible several times and I've never heard the disciples getting sick when they were with Jesus. I've never heard of them getting a lack or want when they are with Jesus. The same thing with you. If you are walking with Jesus, he will perfect you. You are looking for perfection? Don't look anywhere else. It is inside you. As long as you are living according to the word. As long as you are fellowshipping with Jesus, the power is inside you. Praise God. He is not in anyone else, but inside you. All you have to do is fight the good fight of faith because the devil is there. Paul said, we are aware of your schemes. He will come and scheme to you. He say, yeah, you can't do that. Praise God. You know man is built with an ability, uh, we can do very crazy things. Uh, I remember when, uh, when we were young again, uh, me and certain friends of ours, uh, we had a friend that was quite alikula vizuri. I was looking for that word. He was well eaten. He alikula na mzuri. So we, he was a friend. He was a friend and several of us so we used to do some things, let me not confess all my sins. <laughs> so there's a, there's, there's a time we went to a certain place, and you know, boys, we walk around so much. And so we entered a place where there, are, there was dogs, umboa. And these guard dogs, they are very serious. They are no joke. When they see you, they just bark. And the first bark will actually will bring you to your knees. Praise God. So we were there and we had a back. And so when I was young, I was very, very small. So we started running. You know, they're like, when certain things happen, you forget that you are with a group. You just remember yourself. 
and I, everyone ran, ran, ran like crazy. And so we thought that this friend of ours, we have left him behind. This, this friend of ours that has eaten well, we thought that he's behind us because, you know, with such a, you cannot run that fast. And now we ran. But lo and behold, he was the first one to reach home. <laughs> it was crazy. Why? Because it was the situation. Praise God. It was adrenaline. Like, it's crazy. Adrenaline will make you do crazy things. You will jump a fence that you have never actually done. Praise God. And how much more when you are working with God? If you can push your body to that level, you yourself, how much more when you are working with God? How much further will you go? Where you will reach the greatest heights that you have never even dreamed of. All you have to do is believe and fight the good fight of faith. You will mount up, you will run, you will walk. But all you need to do is trust in the Lord. The glory of the young men is in their strength. But we do not rely on our strength. That is the glory of the young men that, do, that, that, that don't know God. But we know something. Praise God. If, that, if the young man got an injustice and went to that judge, day one, day two, they would have left a long time ago. Or they would have beaten the judge senseless. Praise God. But because it was the widow that relied nothing on herself but her determination, she stayed there for several days and she got her miracle. One as a few. The question I'm asking today is, what is that miracle that you're desiring from God? Maybe you are, I know we are not perfect. There is something you're desiring from God. That which you're desiring from God, it is here today. Praise God. And God is ready to answer that prayer. God is ready to give you that which you want. God is ready to give you that healing. Don't look at impossibilities. He is ready to defy the laws of nature. He is ready to actually for you, he will defy everything. So that actually you get the perfect life that you desire. That perfect life that he gave you to be. That perfect life that he died for. Praise God. Because Jesus never died for you to be the tail. He died so that you can be the head. So that you can rule. So that you can be above. So that he can restore you back to that old nature of Adam before he sinned. Where Adam did crazy things. I always ask myself, how did Adam name the fishes in the sea? What did he do? Did he go down the sea? And how did the fish understand him? That is the nature that God actually wants to return you to back. And what you need to do is fight the good fight of faith. You need to lay hold of this eternal life. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight your body. Fight your friends. Fight those negative things that are coming to you. Those suggestions that are making you go down. Fight it with your mind. Go to the word of God. If it says you are on top, you are on top. If it says you are ahead, you are the head. If it says you are the king, you are the king. If it says you have overcome, you have overcome. It is a fact of life. Don't believe anything else. Praise God. Let's rise up and on our feet as we have finished. Just take a few moments. You know what you want. You know that which you want to lay hold of. I don't know, but you know. And I want you to cry to God now. Speak to God. Because he is here. Don't look at your neighbor. I have said fight the good fight of faith. Don't listen to your neighbor. Pray and lay hold. Speak to your father. God, I thank you and I bless you. I give you praise, glory, and honor. I pray that, dear God, I may lay hold of this eternal life. I may pray that I may lay hold of that which you are given to me. I pray that I may lay hold of that which you have destined for me, my God. I pray that I will fight this good fight of faith. That I will fight with my mind. I will fight with my body. I will fight with everything that I have. That Jesus, you alone are the one that will give me the strength. You say that I will mount up. I will mount up on wings, Jehovah God because I will run I will not be weary I will walk I will not faint my God I'm trusting I'm believing in you Jehovah because you can do it you have done it ah Jehovah God and now I'm laying hold of it in Jesus name come on speak to your father he's here to listen to you don't look at someone else just speak to God 
because he wants to give it to you it is yours in the name of jesus christ we thank you jesus we bless you we give you praise glory and honor jehovah god because you have done it in jesus name we thank you my god there is none like you mighty god you are the king of kings the lord of lords the one that answers prayers the one that holds us jehovah god there is none like you oh we thank you we bless you come on give the lord a shout and a praise because he has done it in the name of jesus he has done it in the name of give him a shout a praise because he deserves it in jesus name